I'm back once again with the self-powering diesel heater project. Uh, after murdering all, well, after murdering even more tags in another setup, this is another other setup. David, uh, other David, has taken it away and rebuilt it with the expensive tags this time. So I've been playing a little bit in the background, and I've always filmed it this time, not making that mistake again. And basically, I'm slowly pushing the fueling up. A little bit at a time to see how close to uh, you know running on its own power I can actually get it with these tags and the water cooling. And in my current setup, uh, I'm using the afterburner controller because I can do it from my phone to turn the fueling up quickly. Uh, and I've got this multimeter is showing the output current from the tags, output from the tags uh, running through the meter being an ammeter in the Genesun, which will then be charging the battery if there's any leftover uh, current to charge the battery with. If not, it goes back through the other side, which is the input side, which is the red meter, which is on the input side of the heater. So all the power, the heater and the fan, not the fans, the pumps consume goes through that wire. So we bought a film and see what it actually does. And they've got the thermocouple here. Thermocouple here. One of the probes is on the hot side of the tags and the other is on the cold side of the tags and at the moment they're both sitting about 13.6 uh, inside the heater. So I shall fire it up and then we can, well, I'll bring you back once it's up and lit and we'll have a look at what it's inputting and outputting. Uh, Alright, let's go. Oh, oh, wait, can I, I can actually zoom you in on that meter first because it'll show you the actual current draw. There we go, I like that. So there she goes, she's firing up, and I swear I have seen 12 amps uh, recently. I don't know why suddenly 12, well I know why 12 amps, because my battery's slowly getting flatter, so it's requiring more current to do the same amount of power, but there's 8, 9, 10, yeah. Okay, right, I'll bring you back once it's up and running. Okay, this meter here is the voltage output of the tags connected to the Genesun. Still not got any current. Uh, oh no, there it goes. Woo, where she goes. There's one amp. So the housing temperature. God, I wish I could get all my displays in the one, one shot. Right, does that work? Can, can, we, can we see that one? Nope. Nope, yes. Yes, don't move, please. Okay, uh, housing temperature is 140 odd degrees. So we'll let it ramp up. I'm aiming, aiming for 270 degrees. If I can get 270, that should be probably as good as those tags can, can get. Or I'll switch over to the battery voltage on this display. I will be backwards because I'm not moving my probes, but so the battery's at under 12 volts. But it's going up, which is... I think it's just, that's just recovery as opposed to charging, that's just a, a bit of recovery. Right, we're crossing nearly into the 200 degrees mark on the housing temperatures. I don't know the housing temperature, but the hot side of the tags. Hot side at 200, cold side at 22 degrees obviously being provided by the water cooling setup. Now uh, hopefully you can see on the top meter we're pulling anywhere between 3.7 and 3.9 amps and in this one we're outputting uh, like between 3.4, I mean it's still climbing, if we can get to 3.5 that'd be nice. So this has got 3.5 amps coming out the tags. Still got a bit to go on the temperature yet, we're only at 220. This isn't very exciting, this display, it basically is going to stay at 12.7 because that's what the Genesun will be using as its voltage, it's just going to keep the tags at 12.7 while keeping the current coming out of them, if that makes any sense. It didn't, didn't make any sense when I said it, but hopefully you'll understand it. Here's my battery voltage, is it getting better? Now the battery voltage is charging, it's actually charging the battery. 
Not a lot, mind you. I mean, like I say, charging. It's just letting it recover slowly. So we're almost exy pixies on input and output. We're within maybe 200 milliamps of running. That's us hitting 240. So we've still got a little bit to go yet, and hopefully we can get the tags to output more than what the heater's consuming. So what the problem for me at the moment is, is the hot side, not the hot side, the cold side gets colder because I can only cool the water cooling so much with the throughput of the heater and the pumps because if we start using any more then we consume even more current which makes it harder to, you know, achieve, um, you know, self-running. Alright, who's going to turn off? Must be this one. Back at it. So it's battery decided it was uh, having a turning off moment. So that's us crossing the 250 and the uh, hot side, the housing temperature. Well, at the moment, we're pretty much even. We're almost uh, the same in and out. We can just get the hot side a little bit hotter. And the battery, well, the battery's at 12 and a bit. Ah! My battery's dead! No! <laughs> of all the times! God damn it! I can't plug it! Everything's turned off! Son of a bitches! Wait, can I can I run current through this one? Right, let's let's do let's. Oh, here we go, boys. It's not gonna be fucking pleasant, but hopefully, won't murder the tags in the process. And go. That's. That's, there's, there's, there's something wrong there. Ah, oh, hell. I'm gonna shut this down. Oh, that's because that's the amps over there. Idiot. God damn it, we had four amps. Well, the good news is I haven't killed my tags this time yet. And uh, we have a, a meter switch, but hopefully that doesn't make much difference. And again, we're now just going to let it come back up to temperature, again. And hopefully this meter won't turn off, and this one won't turn off, and I'll get to actually get full readings here of it, doing things, which would be nice. Sadly, I don't have any voltage readings now, but uh, we will uh, we'll just... I mean, the voltage readings aren't super critical, as long as we get to see the in and the out currents being the same or more would be better. Alright, good, we've got up to temperature fairly fast because we started at warmish. And yes, we will be taking these readings with a little pinch of salt in accuracy because they're not the best setup in the world. It could be better, it could be worse because, I mean, I've literally just got the wires clamped in the ends of the leads. No, they're just in the crocodile clamps, they're not attached solidly. Or like that, and that's, I mean, this one's a clamp meter over the wire, so it's not super accurate either. But again, we're up in the 200s and we're already close. I want to see if I can get to 250 degrees. That would be nice. Or if I can get back to 250, that would be excellent. So, there at the moment, we've got the input peaking at 3.8. Go on, show my 3.8. Just about 3.8. And we've got the output at almost also 3.8. So, at the moment, it is running with like 99% self powering. The problem, not the problem, the thing with tags is it's the difference in temperature between the hot sides and the cold sides. So at the moment, or rather early on, 
we could make the hot side hotter faster than the cold side could catch up. But now we're starting to hit the thermal limit where we basically can't cool the cold side fast enough. So there's no matter, even if we got this hotter and hotter and hotter, the temperature difference would still be the same. So we would still basically get the same output. What we would need is a hot side of 250 degrees and like a cold side of a zero would be great or like even less. So we've got a much greater differential in the temperature and then we would probably get even more current out of it. But at the moment, we're, we're, we're there. I'm, I'm gonna call it we're there. We're 3.78 at worst on there and 3.78 at best on that one. So we're, we are, we have achieved the self-powering diesel heater, give or take. We just don't have any excess. So uh, were we to disconnect the battery, I imagine it would continue to run. Uh, let's let's think about this. Let me let me do this. Let, let's let, fuck it. Let's let's go for it. Over here is the battery. The power supply is not active now. Which one of these? That that's the end. For, this is the ground in this little multi plug here. Let me wait. can I zoom in on this? Can. I? Ah, oh, when the meter's gonna turn off, which one? No. I think it was that one. God damn it. Okay, this is the main ground input, is this wire here. So let's disconnect it and see if the heater turns off. It didn't turn off! The heater is now running on its own selfness. It is no longer attached to a battery. Oh, that's weird. It's now entirely self-powering. As I say, this is my main... This... Wait, can you see over here? Let me zoom in a bit. Uh, oh, zoom. This wire, this is the ground... This is the only ground wire. This is the block I was using. This is my main block, and that's the black wire that goes out through the clamp meter. The other black wire is the one that goes out through to the tags. So we're currently not connected to the battery. We are running on... Oh good, now that mirror's gone off as well. Ah, happy days. Stay on! No. Yes. Oops, sorry. Oh, we were totally metering not meter there. So the afterburner is showing a voltage of 12.8 volts where's oh, i don't have a molly bear to check the bloody voltage but yeah 12.7 voltage was the voltage we had before of the tegs output so the only problem i can see at the moment is i can't turn the heater off because as soon as i put it in the shutdown it'll slow down and run the glow plug and i'll just flatten the whole system and it'll just stop dead and I'll probably melt the ECU and kill the tags because there'll be no load left for them to run. But at the moment we are running not connected to a battery. I know it's hard to see but these two wires here, these that, that's the ones coming from the tag modules and they go up to the positive side and the negative side in that connector block but there's one on each side. That was a connection from the battery which is now no longer in the system. We're now just having power from tags straight through through the clamp meter and then into the heater itself. And it is still running. Oh, and our temperature has clipped 260. And now the heater is only able to consume what the tags output, obviously, because there's no battery to fill in the space. It can only consume the three and a half amps that the tags are outputting. That's interesting as well. So now we'll only consume what the tags put out. That's curious. Uh, right, so I should probably reconnect the battery so I can actually shut the heater down now. And then we'll have a wee chat. Right, so let's, can I, can I zoom you in on? So this is what the heater's consuming and see there, right. When I plug the battery back in, this will start to go back up to 3.7, 3.8. Connecting. Now. There you go. I don't know if you heard the heater dip there. 
No, wow, if I had both of them are, we've now got more output. I wonder if that's now charging the battery. I would test, except the fucking batteries in my meter died. God damn it. Right, let's shut this down and let's have a chat. Right, afterburner, D afterburn. Oh, I wonder if we'll see the brief moment where it outputs more than it. Nah, I didn't do it this time. It brought the glow plug on too soon. When it errored out last time, it there was a brief moment where the fans were slowing down and the tags were still hot and it produced about like four amps because there was no load. And then the glow plugs came in and killed everything. Well, I suppose this... Well, I'm not going to say the finale because I said the finale last time and now we're back doing it again. But this time... We have achieved the thing that we initially set out to do, which was to have a self-powering diesel heater. And today, purely by chance and by accident and bravery, uh, we showed this working. We disconnected the battery from the running heater setup and it was able to run itself purely on the output from the tags. Which isn't hugely surprising as they were outputting three and a half amps and 12.7 volts, which is absolutely enough power to run the diesel heater at full power and still provide enough heat for heating and so on and so forth. As, as a kind of off shoot though, you do get quite a lot of hot water if you're wanting to use uh, hot water for things. You know, I don't know, like what we really want is this water to be cold all the time. So I'm, 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 I'm imagining that if you were to have a setup like this, Perhaps you could plumb the coolant water in a, I don't know, radiant underfloor heating so that you can just radiate off the excess heat and still only using like two small pumps or one small pump or a larger pump, trying to use as little pump power as possible so you can maintain the flow around the system and not draw too much current and still have it self-powering. The next step, of course, is to go beyond self-powering is to actually go from just running the heater but actually having some output as well so you could charge the battery that you're running from and obviously once the battery's charged it stops needing the charging output and it can just be self-powering but well I'm, um, I'm pleasantly surprised this time that I have A managed to not kill all the tags even though my meters died and I had to swap the leads mid process and that was embarrassing uh, two that it does actually do the thing. We achieved enough output that it self-ran. And it probably would have done before if I'd thought about it. Like when it was, like in the previous video when we saw the system pulling 3.8 amps and we were putting out three and a bit, I probably could have disconnected the battery then because it just would have dropped back down and sat at the output of the tags because it doesn't have a choice. It'll just has to sit and run at that output. The Genesun controller thing that I thought was dead it must still work in some way, shape, or form because it's outputting a steady voltage, uh, to, you know, enough to charge a battery, twelve point seven volts. So it must still work, I presume. I occasionally, I, I think I see the green light flashing, but I'm not. I'm not sure. I might just be purely imagining the green light flashing on the Genesun. Any comments, questions, anything like that? Please leave them down below, and I'll try my best to answer them. Or other David will try his best to answer them. We've also got. A Facebook page group thing, or David, other David has, where we've got this diesel heater and other diesel heater modifications. If you want to check that out, I'll also leave a link to that in the description. And I think that just about covers it for the meantime for this iteration of the self powering diesel heater. Uh, I might be back with more versions and changes and other things, but that is the future. Uh, that's basically us for today then. So, <gasps> thanks for watching.